If you like Bond, you'll love the next couple of weeks on CHCH tonight at 8.30. This is one of my favorites, Diamonds Are Forever. Now, George Lazenby only did one appearance as 007. He was out, and Cubby Broccoli and Harry Saltzman had to come up with a new Bond all over again. Incredibly, they started looking at American actors to play the legendary British agent. First up, Adam West. They were seriously looking at him, but he was locked into his Batman contract still. So they finally signed another guy, American actor John Gavin. But the studio overruled it. They dangled $1.2 million in 1970s dollars to Sean Connery, who took a week to think about it and said he would return to play Bond for a sixth time. John Gavin paid in full. Back to Diamonds Are Forever. So Willard White is in the movie, loosely based on Howard Hughes, who was actually a benefactor of Albert Broccoli, kept an eye on his career over the years. So he wrote him into this storyline, which also features one of the most famous fight scenes in Bond history. It took three weeks to film this one. James Bond. Thankfully, the right Bond gets up. We mentioned earlier about Americans actually being considered to play the legendary British agent. That didn't happen. But other elements of Diamonds Are Forever were Americanized from the location, Las Vegas, but also the cars. The Aston Martin gets replaced with a Mustang and one of the best stunts to date. I got you now. Lean over. Diamonds are forever, part of the best of Bond, tonight at 8.30 on CACH. If you like Bond, you'll love April on CHCH. Tonight at 8.30, you only live twice. This screenplay was actually written by Roald Dahl. It's Connery's fifth appearance as 007. He actually announced during the filming of this movie that he was leaving the role. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. He did end up coming back for Diamonds Are Forever. This movie also introduces us to Blofeld, or we see him for the first time. Up until now, we'd only seen the back of the guy's head. Tonight, he's played by Donald Pleasance, my favorite villain in the entire series. I am Ernst Stavro Blofeld. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. Donald Pleasant's Blofeld was actually the inspiration for Mike Myers' Dr. Evil. Now, in the movie tonight, Blofeld's lair is this huge volcano set, which is actually one of the biggest sets in Hollywood history. At Pinewood Studios in London, this crater could actually be seen from five kilometers away. Close the crater. Close the crater. You Only Live Twice also introduces another Q gadget, the autogyro Little Nelly. I have much curiosity, Bolsar. What is Little Nelly? Oh, she's a wonderful girl. Very small, quite fast. Can do anything, just your type. reception. Four big shots made improper advances towards her, but she defended her honor with great success. Don't miss the best of Bond. You only live twice tonight at 8.30 on CHCH. If you like Bond, you'll love April on CHCH tonight at 8.30. It's Live and Let Die. This is the Bond movie that introduces Roger Moore as 007, who was actually author Ian Fleming's first choice as James Bond, but he wasn't available at the time, so Sean Connery got the uh, first job. So tonight we'll see Roger Moore make his debut against a backdrop of the New York underworld, throw in some New Orleans voodoo, and a lot of crocs. Ah, uh, there's a lot. He's a croc. Got over careless with him some time back, and he took my whole arm off. Well done, Albert. By the way, the guy who owns that crocodile farm uh, did some of the stunts in the movie. They also honored him. His name's Ross Kananga. They named the villain in the movie after him, Dr. Kananga. Speaking of stunts, the Bond movies have set several world records over the years. In tonight's movie, the boat chase through the Louisiana bayous actually set a record for boat jump at 34 meters. That record held for three years. What the? Yeah. 
it's Live and Let Die, part of the best of Bond, tonight at 8.30 on CACH. If you like Bond, you'll love CACH this week. Tonight at 8.30, 1977's The Spy Who Loved Me. Roger Moore, back as 007. Tonight, he's trying to find out who's stealing U.S. and Russian submarines and start World War III. He partners up with Russian agent, the beautiful Anya Amasova, codenamed Triple X. We're going to make turns for 11 knots. Each bullet has my name on it. First or the last? I have never failed on a mission, Commander. Any mission. Now, Bond always gets the girl, but actually a few years after tonight's movie, Ringo Starr got the girl. He married actress Barbara Bach in 1981. Tonight's movie also introduces the first minion to appear in more than one Bond movie. Jaws was that popular, but not that friendly. The budget for The Spy You'll Love Me, big in 1970s dollars, 13 and a half million. One million of that towards one single soundstage, one of the biggest in the world. A lot of Canadian connections as well. The ski jump, at the time, the longest free-falling jump in the world, done over Canadian soil, Baffin Island. Also, uh, just before production of this movie, Harry Saltzman, who produced with Cubby Broccoli, so many Bond movies finally left just before cameras started rolling. Roger Moore Bond movies from Kitchener, Ontario. You'll see Lois Maxwell tonight after the Bond series when she retired after a view to a kill. You may remember she came to Toronto to write for the Toronto Sun for many years. She passed away a couple of years ago in Australia. Watch for her tonight. It's the best of Bond. The Spy of Love Me, 8.30 on CHCH. If you like Bond, you'll love tonight on CHCH at 8.30. It's 1987's The Living Daylights. In the last installment of You to a Kill, Roger Moore announced he was retiring from the role, so the hunt begins again for a brand new 007. Now, everyone wanted New My Zealand actor Sam Neill to play Bond, James except Bond. for the guy who has final say, Albert Broccoli. He wanted Timothy Dalton years ago. Dalton actually turned it down because he thought he was too young. Pierce Brosnan was also up for it, but ABC renewed Remington Steele couldn't get out of his contract. So, Broccoli went back to a slightly older Timothy Dalton, and finally, Timothy Dalton said yes, and got to say this. Who are you? Bond, James Bond. Dalton reinvented the 007 role somewhat. He knocked off the womanizing. He was also the first Bond not to smoke. That's why he had so much energy to do his own stunts. Royalty also visited the Pinewood studio set. This was front page news back then. By the way, Charles did his own stunts at the time. Desmond Llewellyn is back as Q tonight, meeting his new Bond in Dalton and giving him his new car, a brand new Aston Martin Vantage. Just taking the Aston Martin out for a quick spin, Q. Be careful, 007. It's just had a new coat of paint. What is this? I've had a few optional extras installed. That's not his only form of transportation tonight. 007 has to improvise a little bit here. Glad I insisted you brought that cello. Here, wave this! Doc! We've nothing to declare! The best of Bond, tonight at 8.30, The Living Daylights. Well, teaching students about the dangers of drunk driving can often fall on deaf ears. That's why some.